Good Sunday morning, Bridge Church. How we doing? You guys awake? Are you alive? You coffeeed up? Six of you are. Well, good Sunday morning. My name is Michael Rusher. Uh, my wife and I, Cheyenne, we have the honor and the privilege to serve here at the Bridge Church in a, a couple of different capacities. And I want to give acknowledgement before we dive into our word today. I want to give acknowledgement to a couple of teams um, just because I have the mic and I can. So the first one I want to give acknowledgement to is that my wife and I, again, we are the student leaders here at the Bridge Church. We co-host that group with Matt and Bell Schott. I don't know if they're in here today or not, um, but I want to acknowledge them because it takes, it takes a village to raise children, amen? And so every, every Wednesday getting prepared for this, and it's not that we do this on our own, it is by the grace of God that we prepare and we host these students every Wednesday. But I also want to give acknowledgement, not just to us as the leaders, but to the students themselves. Can we give them a hand this morning? These guys, they show up here every Wednesday. You know, they're, some of them, their parents, yes, they kind of make them still come. But some of them drive on their own willingly. They just show up. They've got a better attendance record here than they do at school. And, and they come, and they're willing to hear the word of God. They deal with us as we kind of fumble through our stuff. And uh, we're just so blessed. And then they serve every Sunday out here at the cafe. If you guys have not stopped in the cafe yet and gotten a drink, um, we have seasonal drinks. This is a shameless plug for you, by the way. Keep track. I'm trying to fit 10 of them in here. Um, but you can go out there, and we have pumpkin spice cold foam and lattes. So it's better than Starbucks, for one. It's, it's part of Jesus. I mean, why would you not want to buy it? And you get to help the, the, uh, I'm sorry, the student ministry a little bit. So the next time you're kind of coming through the cafe, you're like, I want a drink. Yeah, stop in the cafe and see them. Uh, also want to give acknowledgement real fast to the production team. Uh, these guys, we meet here every Thursday. And it's not, this is not just something that just, this just doesn't take place because we're good musicians and the media team knows what they're doing. Um, this is prayerfully put together every week. That's led by Andy Cottrell. Can we give the production team a hand? These guys do an awesome job. And we're not just up here rehearsing, by the way. We have, in our Thursday nights, there's, there's a move of God that takes place. We have very much found ourselves in just a form of worship that's very organic and natural. And uh, so I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of, of those two different teams. Uh, lastly, I want to give an honorable mention to my two legs. They have held me up for 32 years, and hopefully they do it for the next hour. We'll be okay. <laughs> I said hour, and no one got scared. <laughs> So we have been in this series, uh, The Beatitudes, and um, has anyone been challenged by this series yet? Yeah, it's been a little tough. There's been a couple of things that I've had to go home and chew on, and I didn't like the way it tasted at all. Um, but we get uh, the passage of Scripture comes from uh, Matthew in the fifth chapter, verses one through eight, and it says, now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. And so, so far, we have covered blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, and Pastor Rocky taught last week about blessed are the merciful. And today's focus is blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That's actually Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. I'm going to take two points here real fast before we dive into our actual message. Blessed are, the word are is a present tense form of verbiage. So when I read blessed are the pure in heart, it doesn't say blessed were or blessed could be. It's kind of a confirmation. Blessed are the pure in heart. The other thing is, <clears throat> for they will see God. It's fulfilling a word to us. So it's telling us that as long as I keep myself in check and I remain pure in heart, I will see God, not only on a daily basis in my life, but hopefully in eternity. Amen? Amen. So it raises the question, how does one obtain or sustain a pure heart. In the word as I was preparing for this, I found that when this takes place, this takes place during salvation. So when I come to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, there's a transformation that takes place in the spiritual man. And so, and the, actually in Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, in the Bible we read, it says, I will take out of you that old stony heart and I will put in you a new heart of flesh. So this isn't like a, a flip or flop if you ever watched that TV show. This is an HGTV special. This isn't, it's not fresh coat of paint and some shiplap. This is an actual, I'm going to remove everything from you that is not of me, and I'm going to place everything in you that is of me. So now we can kind of view this pure of heart standpoint from a position of being forgiven. This isn't something that's earned. You know, Old Testament church was built on you know, a works-based faith. You had to work for everything. You had to earn everything. And that's not how this beatitude works but also understanding that at the same time, we're not perfect, including the one standing here. Trust me, if anyone knows I'm not perfect, it's me. 
And we're the best at telling ourselves about it, and we discredit ourselves about how we are not perfect. But through the plan of salvation, we have the opportunity not to be perfect, but to be Christ-like, and hopefully to pursue a life in him. In the word, it says in Philippians 2 and 15, this is your first scripture, you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked, twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. And who would agree it's a dark place out there? It's dismal, it's bad. A lot of negativity that floats around. But when that plan of salvation takes place in our life and we go through that internal transformation, we are now without blemish. We are perfectly pure because the blood of the lamb, it actually says that in the word, it was pure and spotless. So it covers all of our sins. In the book of 1 Peter, it says the blood of Jesus is without blemish. It covers all your sin. So you're either 100% forgiven today. You're either 100% walking in forgiveness or you're not. And that can sound kind of negative. It's early on, so bear with me. We're going to get there. <clears throat> but because his blood is so pure, it reminds me of an old song. Uh, I can't, this is a multi-generational church, but I, I come from an old Pentecost church, and they used to sing a song that literally talked, it was called The Blood, and it talked about how it reached to the highest mountain or it'll catch me in the lowest valley. And what that tells me when I, I start to interpret that today in my life where I stand at the age of 32 it doesn't matter where I am in life. It doesn't matter if I am successful or if I am completely confident in everything that I do or not, or if I'm in the absolute just belly of the whale and I'm completely lost and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't understand the circumstances and situations I find myself in. The blood of Jesus is still good enough to cover everything. All right, now we're going to get into it a little bit. <clears throat> so the first thing that we have to do, this is your first talk point of the day. The first thing that we have to do in order to sustain a pure heart is we have to be quick to believe. Can we do a little bit? Can you, can you repeat that? Quick to believe. Quick to believe. I like that. The, the, better, the more you talk, the faster I go. We actually may beat the clock today and let B-Kids out on time. Morgan's, Morgan's going to be like, can you teach next week? <laughs> and by the way, this is only going to go one of two ways. It's either going to go really good and, and, and it's going to be received well, or my entire family is moving them to another state. So... <laughs> That's all there. My wife's like, yep, that's that. Yep. Amen. <clears throat> and I got to tell you, I want to, I want to back up here. I kind of overshot something, uh, first time. So give me a little grace. Uh, when pastor Rocky and pastor Laura first came to me about teaching in this message series, I got to admit to you, I was a little bit let down. I was like, you guys want me to teach about like the B, I don't know what the Beatitudes were. I got it. I don't, I don't remember these from school. Once I left school, that all left. I don't remember any of this stuff. And so I was like, okay, the first time I'm going to teach, I'm going to teach about something cool. You know, like David and Goliath stuff, like, you know, all this, like, victory and all, great things. And they were like, no, we should talk about being a pure of heart. And I was like, that kind of sucks. <laughs> like, like, really? I'm, I can talk about anything. You gave me this? And so I was kind of bummed. <laughs> Just being honest, transparent. We're talking about how you got to be pure of heart. I'm being transparent with you today and confessing my sins. And I was like, man, this isn't going to be that great. Sorry, me and this mic are going to fight, I promise. Uh, but as I dove into it, I realized uh, probably like the first day into it, I was like, oh, wow, no, I, I need this message. Not even for you, I need it for me because there's some things in my life that I'm really struggling with. But I found it so fitting that October is recognized as Pastor Appreciation Month. And they did not know this was happening because if they did, they would beat me. But I want to give acknowledgement to our lead pastors here. It, it just, I, it's too coincidental that they gave me pure of heart. And I can't think of two people who have a more pure heart than Pastor Rocky and Pastor Laura. Amen? Can we give them a hand? I don't know where Laura's at, but I promise she is mean mugging me right now. I love these guys with all my heart. We've had, I've had the honor and privilege to be, to be friends with them. We have, we have worked together. Uh, they have been a, a youth pastor, an associate pastor, and now my lead pastors. And not only that, we're neighbors. So again, if this doesn't go well, that's why I'm moving because I'm not going to deal with that. <clears throat> but I do love them. They have, they have some of the purest hearts I've ever met. I mean, just this week, they were out in Belize doing ministry work. And I mean, I, you, you don't know the countless hours your pastor has put in for you guys. Um, they lead the charge during 21 days of prayer and fasting. They are here, even if they oversleep and they miss one, they are still here for the majority of them. Yeah, that's right. We didn't know what happened. Like, they're not here. Something bad must have happened. <laughs> it's pretty bad when the pastors aren't here. But, um, <laughs> but they, are, they are some of the most pure of heart people. They live sacrificially. They have servant's heart. And so I just wanted to publicly let them know that we love and appreciate all they do for here at the Bridge Church. Um, but we got to get into this or we are going to be late and then B-Kids is going to be really mad. So you have to be quick to believe. 
Doubt, fear, and unbelief, these types of things are spiritual killers for believers. And although some doubt is okay and, and some fear is okay, you gotta be careful that you don't kind of roll that over into your spiritual life. And like, here's some examples of like some, some healthy doubts and healthy fears. If you're sitting at home and it's raining outside and you're watching KFES 12 and they say, it's a 90% chance of sunshine, I doubt that's accurate. Another fear that's pretty healthy is a, a fear of heights. Uh, just last week, my wife and I and our family had the, we went to one of the connect groups and it was Sunday drives, we went out to Elephant Rock, another shameless plug. If you wanna have some fun, get in one of these connect groups. We, uh, we went on a drive, we ended up at Elephant Rock and my daughter, my middle daughter, Scarlett, had to, we went to a place where we were over this, I guess a bluff you would call it, and down below it was like a reservoir of water. And she has no fear. That, word, that four letter word doesn't mean anything to her whatsoever. Uh, and meanwhile, I've got all the fears and all the anxieties to cover everybody. And she had to get just as, I mean, just as close as she could get to the edge of that thing, which forced me, the person who has an inanimate fear of water, to be just as close as she was. And I'm not scared of the water because I can't swim. I can swim enough to save me. I can't save you, but I can save me. <laughs> but it put me in a position where I had to be like, okay, well, I've got to, to kind of block this because if not, you know, if you fall in, then I got to jump in and I don't know what's in the water. And I don't, it may be an alligator. It could be a shark. It may be a frog that's just as big as me. I don't know what's in there but I know I'm afraid of it. Don't laugh, Devin, it's for real. I'm scared of the death of the water. Ask my wife, when we go to the, the lake and stuff, like I, I very rarely will actually just willingly jump in the water. I'll be on the boat, I'll be on the raft, but if I gotta be in the water, I'm running like Jesus across it because I ain't trying to be in it. <laughs> but if we're not careful, these things start to develop in our life and they kind of calcify a little bit and then before you know it, we start to become, as Christians, we start to become analytical with God. And we start to become cynical because life is negative and it kind of makes us that way. Makes us skeptical because there has to be an answer for everything. And then sometimes we get mathematical because, well, that math ain't mathing. When I was about 13 years old, <clears throat> I went to, I, again, I was born and raised in a Pentecost church. I was about 13 years old. It was the summertime and one of my good friends, his name was Michael as well. I won't give his last name for trademark reasons. I don't, just don't want him getting called out on social media for no reason. But I, uh, Michael was going to stay the night with me. And it was a Tuesday night. And um, my mom and dad were like, well, hey, if he's staying with you, then he's got to go to church. And I was like, hey, bro, like, if you're going to stay, you got to go to church. And he was like, I ain't never been to church. And I said, well, th then you can't come to my house. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and so we, he talked. He's like, you know what? Okay, that's cool. We'll go to church. I was like, all right, bet. Let's go to church. So we go to church. And in the middle of church, one part of our service uh, was where whoever was leading the service would ask if anyone in the audience had a prayer request. And so this is kind of like just confessing your sins, what you had going on at the time. <laughs> you had to be real careful about what you said. And without any fear or regret of tomorrow, my friend Michael, who's never been to church, was just like, pow, I got a prayer request. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> I felt like Michael Scott. I was like, no, God, no, you don't. And I didn't know what else to do but just sit there. And I was like, dude, I, I don't know why. I even just why I didn't want to bring you. You're going to embarrass me in front of my church people, bro. And he, he ends up asking a request, and when he said it, I was just, it made it even worse. He was like, hey, man, um, I don't know how to really do this, but my cat went missing like three days ago, <laughs> and I just, I just pray my cat comes back home. And I was like, dude, if it was a dog, Jesus would probably care. It's like, <laughs> I know that's terrible because we have cat. We, okay, I, I have a cat. I don't have a dog. My wife won't allow me to have one. Maybe you can pray about it and she'll let me have one. But we don't have a dog. And so I was like, dude, like, what? Whatever, bro. I don't even know what to do with you anymore. And so, you know, church happens, whatever. A couple weeks later, he comes back with me. And again, they came back through. And I'm looking at him like, don't you say a word, man. Keep your hands in your pockets. Like, be cool. You're going to ruin my street cred. And again, like, without hesitation, it came across, pow, hands in the air. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, hey, I just want to let you guys know, um, my cat came back home. And I was like, what? Like, you ain't even told me that yet. You're going to dump this on me for the very first time? So here I am at the age of 13, and without even realizing it, I'd already become analytical or systematic with my approach and my prayers and my beliefs with God. And like, that was like, an, it didn't have to be prompted. It wasn't taught. It just happened because of life. And so in Luke 24 and 25, it says, oh, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoke. Even at a young age, I had already realized how to kind of analyze God without even meaning to. It just happened. Thomas is one of the 12 disciples, 
And in John 20 and 25, I love what this says. It says, and unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will never believe. And the Greek actually says, I will never, ever, ever believe. Thomas had the opportunity to see God face to face, and he couldn't believe it because of the doubt and the cynicism that had kind of calcified in his life. We've got to be careful, guys. You've got to learn how to guard your heart. You have to prayerfully guard your heart. Because if not, what happens is we start to develop without meaning to, this impromptu response to God. In Proverbs 23 and 7, it reads, and as he thinks in his heart, so he is. You kind of heard that old saying, like whatever you put in comes back out. And so if I allow doubt, unbelief, cynicism, being analytical, and I start allowing those things to be absorbed into my heart, then that's what I project back out to everybody else. So the first thing we have to do, we have to be quick to believe. And the second thing we have to do to sustain a pure heart, we have to be quick to forgive. Two thirds of y'all just said, that ain't me. Internally, you made a decision, that ain't me. Check out what it says in Colossians 3 and 13. Forgive as quickly and completely as the Father forgave you. When I read that in preparation for this message, I kind of, I had that same kind of, mm, I don't know if I can do that one. I'll do anything else you want, God. I'll be obedient. Like Andy talked about Wednesday, I'll be obedient. But I don't know. I don't know if I can do this one. I heard a story when I was preparing for this message as well, and I want to share it with you because it paints a very good picture of how this can look like. Uh, there was a village that was, all their water came from a natural water source. It was a stream that ran to the village. And over the course of time, people in this village began to get sick. And they weren't just getting sick. A few of them were actually dying because something was contaminating their water source. One day, one of the gentlemen in the village said, you know what, hey, this has this gone long enough. We've got to figure out what's going on. And so he, he goes out on a, on a trek and he takes, his, takes up the mountainside. And some ways up, he ends up seeing something in the water and it stands out to him and he gets a little closer to investigate and he realizes that what it is, it's the carcass of a cow that has been laid over in the stream. And so this, this putrefying cow is kind of spilling all this contamination into the water, and that water was running down the hill down to the village, and it was poisoning the water source and making everyone sick and even killing them. And if, if Michael's not careful, okay, I'll personalize this. If, if I'm not careful, that's what happens to me. I'll allow things to build up in my life because I haven't really gone before God and asked him to help me with it, and I try to handle it on my own and force my own agenda to take place. And then what happens is I'm poisoning my own water source without even realizing it. So today you have, to, you have to remember like we can't afford as Christians, we're not allowed that. We can't do that because this, dark, this, this world is dark and it needs somebody to shine some light in it. You don't need to add to the negativity. You don't need to add to the, the analyst in the world because you guys know how it is. Like if you're in a situation, you're talking about problems, doesn't matter if it's politics or or whatever, we won't go down all the list, but like anyone in the room that has another theory or has more doubt or disbelief is smarter than the next person for whatever reason. Like if you sit in a conversation, somebody who's like, well, I, I think this, and he's got his little optic glass over, oh, I think this is the problem. No, maybe you're just not intelligent either. It's possible, but we've got to be careful. We can't afford for these things to happen in our life. And sometimes they do, and we've got to learn how to handle it. Sometimes we get offended, Right? As humans, we get offended for some reason more than we should about everything. Sometimes we get lied to. We get deceived. Jealousy takes place. Maybe some miscommunication. It's hard to understand a lot of dialogue and context through text messages. I mean, and that's how we communicate just about all the time. Miscommunication. Judgment. The thief of comparison. All of these things. Hatred. Bitterness. A hurt, maybe it's a, a physical or a spiritual, a mental, some kind of hurt or abuse. Unfaithfulness in a relationship, maybe even in a marriage. Like these are heavy things that over time, if not dealt with correctly, end up leading to a cow being just in our stream, just poisoning. Now, all, we, all the village had to do was get the cow out of the stream and the stream would self-purify. And today, hopefully, as we work through this message, that's what I can help lead us to is removing that cow out of our stream and purifying this. But you've also got to be careful because this is, this is the next thing that happens. You start to let that marinate a little bit 
And then you start playing off these conversations with yourself about how it's going to go when you see that person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you, you know how you hype yourself up in the car? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, yeah, well, <laughs> wait till I see, I see them again. <laughs> Let me tell you, boo-boo. <laughs> they finna get theirs. You feel like Tyler Perry? I'm finna get God before they get me. I'm gonna get them first. Mm-hmm. What if no one's getting you and it's all in your head? What if maybe you're just a little bit off-centered and off-kiltered a little bit? Maybe you need to realign yourself. Did you ever investigate that? Probably not, because we'll self-justify anything. That's what we do. But in Proverbs 4 and 23, it says, guard your heart with all diligence. From, for, from, from it flow the rivers or the issues of living water. You start thinking about it in that perspective, it changes the way that you view what you allow in and what you allow out. And you say, well, Michael, I know I'm supposed to, s- supposed to guard my heart, but you don't know how they treated me. You don't know what they said. Well, they were my friend in my face in my connect group, but yesterday I heard that they were saying this about me. They didn't like my Instagram page. They didn't give me a follow. They didn't comment on my status on Facebook. They didn't join my book club. They didn't invite my kids to the birthday party. They didn't support me on my new venture. Or they mocked me. They made fun of me. They tried to poke me and prod me a little bit. Guys, that's what humans do. Like that's, uh, as much as you maybe don't want to believe it, that the world's just full of just great people, and it is, there's a lot of great people out there, like unless you subject that stuff to the spirit, that's what you're going to confront every day. And you're right, like, com- you know, complete transparency. I don't know everything. I don't know everything that you're dealing with and everything you've been through and how the situations in your life have maybe calcified your heart a little bit. I don't know all those things. I kind of, I, I battled with sharing this thought with you guys this morning just because it's, it's one that in my own life, I have struggled with it. And forgiveness is very, very tough. But it's even harder when it's your family. And I had a situation years and years ago um, with my mother. I gave her a warning in case she sees us on social media, she'll be caught off guard. But I had a, I had a situation years and years ago where I felt like I've, I've been betrayed in the biggest way I could be betrayed. Just being transparent. And... Uh, I, find my, I found myself questioning just about everything in life. It's like, okay, so if, if, I mean, this is all that my life's gonna be, what's the point in doing this anymore? And it, I wound myself up being homeless and kind of couch surfing a little bit, trying to find my rhythm, trying to find my people, and just couldn't find it. And it took me a long time to get back to a place, and, and, and I didn't even realize really how, how bad this had impacted my life or even my marriage until just probably the last three or four years. You know, because marriage is a little bit of work. You gotta, you gotta work at that thing. It didn't just happen naturally. My wife's shaking her head, yes, yeah, she agrees. I'm hard to deal with. <laughs> it takes a little bit of work. And as, as a couple, as we kind of went and dove into our relationship a little bit, and I started to peel back the layers of things that had happened in my life, I realized that there was an event that had taken place 15 years prior that was still affecting the way that I was walking in my marriage. And so when you think about that, like there, there may have been small moments that took place when you were a child. Maybe they've taken place here recently. But if you don't get that out of your stream, it will affect everything else that happens below. And you're right. I got I to gotta go back to this. You're right. I don't know how you feel exactly, but God does. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, as a follower, we have to look at how he responded as our example, as our template on how we're supposed to handle these things. Jesus was judged, was he not? He was tempted. He was literally welcomed in to Jerusalem one week with palms. They they just covered, they paved a way for this guy. And the next week they killed him. Last time I checked, I'm not dead. Thank God. He was betrayed by one of his best friends. Judas betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Relevant to today's times, that's about four months' wages. I think about that, and I'm like, none of my friends would betray me for, for four months' worth of wages. 
People do it for less. That's real talk. Do it for much less. They'll do it for self-gratification. They'll do it to pump them up and make you feel less than. And that's the truth. But still yet, he loved them enough to sacrifice his life. And this is why we struggle with forgiveness as humans is because we're not God. As much as we think that we are completely in tune with the spirit, until you cross from this side to the other side of glory, you're not gonna be perfect. So you're gonna screw up and you're gonna get it wrong and you're gonna get mad and you're probably dare say hate somebody. That's just how it is. But it's easier for us to do it that way, you know? Like, it's easier to see things my way. Like, when you're in an argument with somebody, it's always easier to see your way. No matter how good you think you are at confrontation, your way is always the forethought. And the same thing happens with God. Like, Andy talked about Wednesday. Like, we're so good about it. Let's, let's negotiate a little bit, God. Like, hey, I know you want me to talk to that person and forgive that person, but let's start with the baby steps. Can I forgive the barista at Starbucks because she took so long first? And then I'll get to maybe the real deep stuff? Let's start with the baby steps. <laughs> But the purest form of forgiveness that you can ever experience in your life here on earth is only gonna be understood by coming to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and experiencing his grace and his love and his mercy. That's the only way it's gonna happen. Pope John Paul II wrote this, and I have to share it with you. It's just a great, great quote. He said, faced with the many difficulties which fidelity to the moral order can demand, even in the most ordinary circumstance, the Christian is called with the grace of God invoked in prayer to his sometimes heroic commitment. As Gregory the Great teaches, one can actually love the difficulties of this world for the sake of eternal rewards. I think that last sentence kind of sums it all up. One can actually love the difficulties of this world for the sake of eternal rewards. I translate that to this. I have to accept one thing. I'm not God, you are. I can't do this on my own. I can't handle bitterness. I can't handle feelings of of malice and vindictiveness. I can't handle the, the thief of comparison. I can't do it. But God, you can help me. That leads us to our third talk point. To sustain a pure heart, you must be quick to believe, quick to forgive. The third thing we have to do, we have to be quick to repent. Marriage is a great way to learn how to repent. Amen. Amen. That's right. Any of y'all that have been married for a minute, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just like your spiritual walk with God. Every day is a new day. And there are new trials right around the corner. Lord going to test me. Amen. Hmm. Not today, devil. Not today. So... I did not let my wife read my notes, so I can say this, and I'll deal with the repercussions later. <laughs> my, my wife and, when I can't even say my wife and I, my wife loves to buy, um, you know, articles offline, you know, shopping. Everybody shops online anymore. And one of these things that she likes to buy a lot is furniture pieces. I have never in my human life put together a piece of furniture and not had just a fit over it. Like, it never ends well. It always ends with every piece of it just thrown against the wall or something stupid happens, right? Like, it every you know, you're like on step 13 of 497 and you're like, 16 millimeters, you give me a, uh, this is a 14. It doesn't fit. Or you over-tighten everything because you didn't read the instructions and then you can't like, oh, it says not to tighten and I didn't listen. Now what do I do? And you just break it and your wife's like, well, if you didn't read the instructions. I'm like, well, well I'm a man. I don't have to. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I got to walk away and like go self-loathe outside and collect my bearings and come back and be like, I'm sorry, babe, you were right. I should have read the instructions. And she's like, no, I don't want to hear that now. You can talk to me later. Right now, I'm still mad. <laughs> I'm so glad God's not like that. If he was my wife, I'd never be forgiven. <laughs> uh, I probably went too far. <laughs> This seems like a good time to take a drink. <laughs> of water, of water. Let me clear your water, water, drink of water. Pure water, unfiltered, amen. By the way, did you know that purity, anything, it's a simple illustration here, but pure water, okay? Looks like pure water. It's not pure water. There's all kinds of like minerals for your enhancement and stuff. 
Well, I still like it better than spring water in a bottle. I'm just telling you. But anything with, anything with another element in it is no longer pure. Just so you know, a little free nugget. Wasn't in my notes. Just wanted to share it with you. <clears throat> free nugget. So life is like that, right? Like you have these, like I'll give Pastor Rock is another example, not in my notes, but I'm gonna use him because he's my friend. You know, I bet he stays in a constant spirit of forgiveness when he is driving down the interstate. I have no doubt that he's just repenting from start to finish. I've heard so many stories about this. Like that man just lives at the hem of Jesus' garment. Lord, forgive me. That's all he's doing. And maybe, maybe there's a coworker that you work with. You're like, gosh, you just, you suck. I don't like you. It's okay to say that. That's a transparent thought. Like, I, I don't like you. I don't like anything about you. The way you talk, your voice is annoying. I like the smell of your perfume. I, these aren't my issues because I don't work with no, I work for myself. So <laughs> if I don't like it, it's just because I don't like me. <clears throat> or, or, or maybe, you know, it's, it's a friend that you're kind of like, uh, you're my friend, but you're not my friend. You're kind of my friend. But I just deal with you because I got to because our friend circle is kind of the same. Or maybe you just feel like there's somebody's, like their life goal is just to make your life miserable. Like, and I do believe that there are some people that are out there looking to do that. Like they're just like, that's my goal. I just want to make your life as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> but when you're walking in a spirit of repentance, you have to understand that the apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I die daily. So the way to overcome that is that you have to, say, you have to put a death to your spiritual self and subject the flesh to the spirit of God. And that happens by the way of repentance. But repentance is hard. And here's why it's hard. Three of the hardest things for people to say, I was wrong, I need help. I'm gonna butcher this last one. <laughs> Wash the shire sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I couldn't say that. Wash the shire. Is that it? Wash the shire? Wash the shire? Worcestershire. That's not right. You're trying to make me do that on purpose. That's not right. No, we just had an about this last night. Who settled it? Your mom did? It's probably right. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Whatever. When I get into a place of self-justification and I kind of have those conversations with myself and I start to think that, hey, I, I got a right to feel this way. I'm not having that transparent, pure heart that God has blessed me with. Now I'm just self-justifying because I can and because I want to, because my will is easier than God's will. And sometimes this even happens. You don't know yourself justifying. Anybody ever been caught up doing that? You don't know it. And it's good to have a spiritual leader in your life that you trust that can speak into you and say, hey, if you're married, it can be your spouse. If you're not married, you're in a connect group, be a connect group leader, another shameless plug. Be your lead pastors. If, you're, if you've said yes to the dream team board and you're on the dream team, it's another dream team that says, hey man, I've been noticing like you kind of just seem out of whack a little bit. Let me just kind of, it's okay to have those. They're kind of like the little rocket boosters on the side of a, a rocket ship as it docks like a space station. You know, it kind of has to keep that thing completely squared up. That way it completely mounts perfectly. Like they're here to keep you aligned. There's nothing wrong with that. In Proverbs 12 and 15, it says it like this. The way of a fool seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Hmm. The wise, listen to it. Let me, this is not in my notes. I'm going to give this to you because it's been on my mind and it's for somebody. I guarantee it. Maybe it's just for me. Just because somebody lends you an ear doesn't mean their heart is pure enough to hear what you have to say. You need to be careful about who you decide to be a spiritual leader that you trust in your life. Be careful who you decide to vent to. Be careful who you're transparent with because sometimes that person that you think that you can trust they ain't necessarily it. So prayerfully consider that. But listening to advice requires a follow through. And repentance is much more than just saying, I'm sorry. It's recognizing that I'm going one way and God wants me to turn and go the other way. Being pure in heart means that I'm quick to believe, I'm quick to forgive, and I'm quick to repent. <laughs> Having a pure heart and walking with God every day allows us to see him on a daily basis. It's not just something that we have to look forward to when we cross over into eternity. We can experience him day after day after day through love and grace and mercy. I'm gonna close with this last story. It talks exactly about repentance. 
I've heard all of my life pretty well. Again, growing up in a, in a Pentecostal church, you know, we, I heard this a lot. Different people say, oh, I can't, I can't wait till I get to heaven. I can't wait till I get there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see Mark. I'm going to see John. I'm going to see Paul. I'm going to see Jesus himself. I'm going to see my mom, my dad. I can't wait till I talk to these people and I walk down the streets of gold. I can't wait till I get to experience all those things. And I always think about one person because I think he's very relatable. So when Jesus was crucified, give you a little, a little backstory. When, when Jesus was crucified, there were two thieves on each side, and one on each side of him that were crucified with him. And the one on the right, as they were, being, as they were crossing from this life to the next, the one on the right just simply asked Jesus to remember him when he entered paradise. And Jesus replied and said, truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. And the part that always kind of just, just I could kind of ramble on this, but I, I wish I could have been there on the other side of glory when they, when they came up to the angel and they've got the Lamb's Book of Life laid out there. Like think about what that would be like. You know, you, you kind of get there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this gentleman Steve for the day. So this guy's name is Steve. And Steve approaches the angel and he's got the Lamb's Book of Life laid out there. And the angel says, how can I help you? He says, oh, I'm, uh, I'm just here to check in. He's like, okay, cool, yeah, what's your name? Steve, okay, Steve, let me, let me scroll. Let me see if I find you, Steve. Okay, Steve, is, was that Steve with an S or, or Steve with an F? Or, is it Steve? Yeah, Steve, okay, Steve. Looks through it, doesn't see it. He goes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call my supervisor and let him get down and take a look at this and uh, see if we can figure this out. So the supervising angel comes down. The supervising angel, hey, how you going, what's going on? Oh, we can't find Steve. Well, let's look for Steve, okay. Hmm. Steve, um, what step of next steps were you on? I wasn't on next steps. I hadn't been yet. Okay, that's fine. Um, what what team did you serve on in the dream team? I, I'm not a part of a dream team either. Oh, okay. That's not a big deal. Um, Steve, what church did you go to? Where, you, where What was your assembly that you regularly attended? I don't. I didn't go to a church. How much do you know about scriptural doctrine? I don't know anything about it. I've never heard it. Steve, we're, we're kind of confused, man. Um, man, we've looked at all our records, and uh, there's no notation of you anywhere. So, I, you know, we're, we're kind of stumped. I just, I got to ask you, who said, how did you get here? And Steve just simply replies, the man in the middle said I could come. Don't overcomplicate forgiveness. Don't overcomplicate repentance. Be pure in heart. Desire to be pure in heart. Be quick to believe that God is enough. He will sustain. He will make a way. He can deliver you. He will deliver you. If you've got bitterness in your heart, ask Him to help you with it. Give it to Him. You can't do it on your own. Guys, we can't. It's impossible. If we could, we wouldn't need to do what we're doing today. It would be pointless for all of us to stand here. If you need repentance, seek Him. Lay it down at His feet. Salvation is just the beginning. It's the first step. And maybe today it's your next step. I'm not quite sure. So my question today for all of us is where are you? Where do you find yourself today? Do you find yourself struggling with the belief that Jesus Christ is real? Do you find yourself struggling with, I don't know if God's going to supply? Maybe you're brand new and you're like, you know, I've never heard any of this before. This is all brand new to me. I've never heard this story. I've never heard of the word of God. I've never heard of God. I've never been to church. I don't know any of this stuff. It's fine. You can start by simply believing. And then we can work our way into repentance. Maybe you need to forgive somebody. Something that's happened in your life that was traumatic and caused you to scar. It's a hard thing to do. God can help you with it. So this morning, I'm going to give a call and response. And it's simply going to look like this. If any of those things that we just talked about are hitting you right in the chest, and you're like, hey, that's me. 
I'm just going to have, have you do a simple response. It's not for me. It's not for anybody here at the church. It's between you and God. So as they bring the lights down low, every head's bowed and every eye's closed, I want you to think about this today. Where are you? So if today this was you and any of this has resonated in your life and it's challenged you and it's speaking to you, I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, I want you to take a moment and just raise your hand. It doesn't have to be lifted to the sky. It can be whatever you are comfortable with this morning. And again, this is not for me. This is not to validate that this message touched your life or that everything I said made sense. This is for you and God. One, two, three. Thank you. You can take your hands down. If that was you today, and maybe for the ones that are just here and want to join in, we're going we're gonna to say this prayer. And you can say it in these exact words, or you can translate it into a version that makes the most sense to you. But we're going to pray this. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died and rose again so I can confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a new beginning. I ask you to be the Lord of my life and I surrender all of it to you the best way I know how. And from this day forward, I choose to live for you. The church said amen. Amen. If you'd like to take this time to reflect this morning, we have our communion set up in the back that is to the left of the right rear stage for, or rear of the auditorium for you guys right in front of the sound booth. The communion is available. Our prayer partners will be over here to my left. Our lead pastors will be over here to my right. I myself will be to the right as well. If you want some prayer, someone to join with you in prayer, someone to help take your petitions before the Lord, someone to partner with you. Maybe you need a shoulder to lean on today. Maybe you need someone just to agree with you or help you work through the process because again, this is brand new. That's what these teams are here to do for you today. But before we get to that, I want to have a corporate prayer just over this entire church. And the band's going to play out. And if that's you, give some time for your heart to respond this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you so much for loving us. God, we're imperfect creatures. We strive to be like you, but we fall short. We mess up. Sometimes we get a cow in our stream that's got to come out. God, we've harbored bitterness and malice towards people. We have situations in our lives that we can't figure out on our own. We have hatred that we're tired of carrying around. We have bitterness that has grown to be this giant calcification of our heart. And we can't receive you the way that we need to because we can't move past the thing. God, we need forgiveness. We need you to forgive us of our sins. We need you to come make us new again, make us whole. We need you to solidify yourself in us, God, as we, we push to believe you. You're a way maker, God. You make a way out of no way. You're the author and finisher of our faith today. Help us to be reminded of that as we prayerfully respond this morning. God, I ask that your presence would just fill this place that's been here all day. Let it just rest among these people today. And we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's message. We pray that it strengthened, encouraged, and empowered you. We would love to connect with you. So if you have questions, need prayer, or simply want to let us know how this message has helped you, please send an email to info at thebridgechurchmo.org. To stay up to date with all the events at The Bridge, follow us on Facebook and Instagram.